Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is one that has been requested ever since sharing my empty house tour. Now you may not be new to the channel or you might be, but if you didn't know, I actually purchased a 1929 historic Spanish revival home in Los Angeles and I'm going to be restoring and renovating it here on the channel. We already started a bit of the process and when I shared the empty house tour, so many people were like, those light fixtures are insane. You have to get them appraised. You need to find out what they are worth. And I also just wanted to know you know what year they're from, if they could be original to the home, the era, the style, and of course, the price of the lighting because some of them are extremely interesting. We have about 19 fixtures to go through. I'm gonna be FaceTiming my friend, Dr. Lori, who actually has a YouTube channel here where she shares so much about antiques and collectibles. Her channel is really fun and interesting, so I highly suggest if you've never checked her out and you're interested in antiques or just want something fun to watch, definitely check out her channel. I will link it in the description box below, but we are about to Zoom call her and share with her all of the lighting. We are starting in the lower unit in the front, and then we're going to work our way back and then move upstairs. Hello, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are you? It's good to see good. you. Congratulations on your new house. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. First of all, I have to tell you, I watched your videos like crazy when I found your channel. They are so interesting. Like antique appraisal is so interesting to me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. It's a lot of fun. I show people what to look for and how to tell. And, yeah. You know, and then of course values are always fun. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it's good to talk to you today. Guys, I do want to mention that I actually sent over some photos to Dr. Lori yesterday. So she's kind of gotten a little glimpse at the lights just so it wasn't like full-on live in the moment so she can see uh, some of the styles and such so we're gonna start down in the lower unit and this is the first one here so I actually have a pair of these sconces on the wall you're lucky because a pair is very nice to have of these and okay. I remember you told me that you like arts and crafts and the arts and crafts movement and yes. that's exactly what these are so these are arts and crafts they're hand wrought so they're wrought iron uh, pieces. They're very, very nicely done. I like also the shield back plate. I, shield that's one of my favorite parts. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. What's great about the arts and crafts movement and these, these sconces in general is, first of all, they date to the house. They're from the 1920s. They date right to the house. They're that nice Spanish revival, you know. But what's nice about them, too, is that they have this juxtaposition or this contrast, you know, of the industrial metal and then the nice floral forms the leaves that are turning and the flowers that hold the lamp the light it's really a nice piece i like them a lot probably were original to the house or at least close to original to the age of the home because you told me it was 1929 right the house yes value 800 dollars. so oh. they're really they're really quite nice i have okay. to say they're in good condition they're beautiful and they're very typical of the style. And I'll say this, they're not my favorite. I've seen all these lights and they're not my favorite, but they're good. <laughs> oh, okay. We are now in the entryway and the front door is actually right here. So this is a light that hangs right as you walk into the lower unit. And Dr. Lori, this is what that one looks like. You know, it's funny when you were when you were just talking to to your your audience, you were underneath the light and it's really nice if you see it this way, which is the way most people will view it, right? We yeah, viewing well, it, of course from it. from yeah. So it's really kind of a cool thing and that's one of the things that's wonderful about what's called toll lights. That's what this okay. is. It's a toll light fixture or shan hanging sh not technically a chandelier, a hanging light fixture. And it has that plated glass. So you see all the different colored glass, so you know that stained glass or colored yes. glass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a design in there. There's a little decoration in there too. Which yes, is I, I love that. I love the little, like the texture almost in the glass. Um, and then also they basically have all the floral forms of the toll, which is the metal, the metal uh -huh. stamp. And then it's basically placed on. So it's kind of like this big garland that's just repeated all the way around of the flowers. This is really nice. This is French. It's also from the 1920s, 1930s. And yeah. it's toll, which is the metal work contrasting in that bronzy copper color, more bronzy color with the plate glass. Value on that one about $2,000. So that's okay. a nice fixture. That's a nice fixture. Oh, wow. I, yeah, this I love this one. I love the different glass throughout it and all the colors. I think if the walls maybe were like white in here, it'd really pop because you'd see all the glass colors. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. We're now in the dining room downstairs. And this one, I love this one because to me, it's super symmetrical. There's like a lot of symmetry to it. And I also yes. love 
navy, like this dark navy border is like, I feel like a color I've never seen before. It's like the perfect dark blue. It's a beautiful dark blue. Does it feel military to you? Yes, it just has like this very, I don't even know the wording for it, but it's very okay, established. Okay, so here's, here's <laughs> why I asked the military question. First of all, how tall are you, Drew? Can I ask you that? Um, I'm about six foot tall. This is interesting because when you stand near it, you can see, because your eyes are blue, you can <laughs> see how different that blue is. Right? Yes. So that blue is a military blue, and it's usually like a, a dark gray blue. That wow. blue relates directly to the era of the empire, which is the Napoleonic era, which is the early 1800s. So that pattern with those blue flowers. Mm -hmm. Now, this one also has significant value and time period. It's again, this one, well, the, the, the design is the early part of the 1800s. The time period for this is going to be about the revival of that time period. So the early 1900s. Value okay. on this piece, just about three thousand so oh, dollars. So these wow. are some these are some serious light fixtures yeah. in the antique world. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, made our way into the breakfast nook, and this one, oh, I just hit it. Oopsie. <laughs> this one is a fun one too. I feel like this one almost has like a fantasy vibe to it. It just is like, it's very unique. And to me, this wasn't vintage either. Well, I have to say that I understand what you're saying with respect to. Hey, Dr. Lori, it looks a little bit newer. Yeah. But these pieces, because they replicate the style, but there are elements about your pieces that say that they're original. And one of the elements here is the bottom part of this finial. So that's sort of where it's a ball and then a little finial at the bottom. Yes. And also the structure. This is pretty nice quality. Also, what they, and then this is, these are olive branches. You see the little olives? Yep. Mm -hmm. So typically we associate that with the Italians, but this piece is also French. This one has um, ormolu guild work. So that basically means that they applied that gold. They applied the gold leaf. They applied the gold leaf using mercury in the 19th century when they made the original ones. Yours is a little bit later, but not much later. Yeah. And um, that is very, very difficult for your body. It's very, it's toxic. Value on this one, again, this one's about 3,000 to 4,000. These are expensive European early 20th century light fixtures. I haven't seen wow. any junk yet. Wow. Well, here, yeah. I don't. Nice. Okay, I didn't send you this, and I actually, like, have never showed you this, but I'm pretty sure this has to be newer, right? That looks newer to me. We are actually in the hallway, and this particular light is one that I personally feel like may be expensive just because it's alabaster. I've done a lot of research on alabaster lights and they seem to be very expensive on sites like First Dibs and you know, those kind of Cherish and those kinds of sites, but. Yes, yes. Now I have to, I'm giving you recent values based on sales records retail, okay? So some mm -hmm. of the sites that you might be looking at, maybe you're seeing people who are trying to get a little more than what they're really worth. Got it. Right? They're usually done in sets though. You usually okay. would have these sort of going down a long haul, or maybe um, in a church or cathedral kind of thing in the early 20th century. The one also has some inlaid bronze pieces, sort of yes. like little bows. That's actually a feature, because I did look this pendant up when I first got the house, and I yeah. couldn't find any that had the little bronze feature on them, or the little like applique. Yeah, like the applique accent piece, right? Applied uh -huh. ornament is what I might call it if I was typing up an appraisal. Yeah. Um, usually 800 to 1250. Oh, okay. Just so one. a little less than I thought. Little less than you might have thought, but usually for one, when you see them in groups, you increase That's value cool. a little bit anytime you have a set. I wasn't sure if this one was newer. To me, it felt like a little, it could be, but I didn't know. I don't think so. I think that one's a nice one. I just don't think that that one has the same kind of cachet that the first one had when we first walked into the entry. Uh -huh. But I do like this piece. I like this light some. And it is, of course, again, that same cast work. And they're, they're working with the same idea, the same form, right? They're working with that idea of an industrial material with a natural form. But I would say it's probably around 500 bucks, but would you just get rid of it just because there's not a match or would you just leave it? Well, I mean, there. I mean, there, a sconce does go here, so I mean, I could leave it, but I might replace it with like something a little more interesting, maybe with like three lights or something. Yeah, yeah. So really, you have some valuable pieces so far. I mean, these are nice lights. We have two sconces on the wall here, and then there's also a light fixture up here, which I believe is Art Deco. I believe both of these are Art Deco. They seem very Art Deco to me, at least. 
They're all Art Deco. Now the sconces are more Art Deco than the light fixture. But so, want to start uh, with sconces? Sure. So, yeah. The sconces are um, they're French origin, basically, but they're a little bit different than what we typically see. Typically, what we see is we see a very decorated bronze cast piece. You have them here and they look like they're just inset into chrome and all the decoration is really in the glass. The two that you've got there are gonna have a value around 800 to a thousand dollars. So think of 500 bucks a piece. And then okay. the other one on the other side, 400 to 500 for one. These are very nice fixtures. Now the fixture above, you, above your head is oh, something yeah. that we don't see. It's pretty rare and unusual. It's something that we don't see too much. This one, I'm gonna be a little bit of an art history nerd on you here, and I'm gonna teach you a little bit about this, but this is a transitional style. And in art and architectural history and in art, you know, in antiques history, anytime that you see forms kind of competing against each other, it's usually a time where we're changing in All terms right. of time period. So like, you've got like, those scroll work, You've got those scroll work design pieces, right? And then mm -hmm. you've got these very, very geometric pieces. So again, it's kind of skyscrapers with flowers. It dates to the 1920s. It's a nice fixture at about $1,500. Okay. And it transitions from the Art Deco, which is very streamlined and geometric and sort of industrial, to the Art Modern, which is a 1940s time period movement, art movement. Now, this is a fun light fixture and I actually, I just find this one so interesting because how substantial and thick like the brass work is, it looks, yes. first of all, it looks extremely heavy, but it looks so intricate. It's really heavy. Um, I told you earlier I had a favorite and this is it. Okay. I love this. Yeah, I love this. Um, I will say it's not the most valuable one, but I think the design is just gorgeous. Um, this is a piece of Murano Italian uh, glass light fixture, and it's beautiful for a lot of reasons. First of all, what you pointed out is really important, thickness, right, of the cast bronze. And it's bronze, it's beautiful, and it's it's cast by hand. Mm -hmm. It also has these very, like, victory figures. You can see them sort of with the wings open. Yes, so here those, Yeah. So those are really nice with the garland and that creates an armature or kind of a structure for all of those little hand blown glass pieces from Venice, Italy to sit wow. from Venice and Murano. I mean, it's a, that's a winner. That's a $5,000 piece. It dates to the 1930s. It's really, Oh, beautiful. wow. Yeah, I love that it. One's and I also, I, I also love all of the fixtures that I've seen from antiquing and just in my house that have yeah. the chain. That's also like they made the chain in the fashion of the light. That's right, that's right. They made the, the chain actually part of the design. It's yeah. beautiful. It's my favorite, Drew. Yay, <laughs> I, I love, love that. It. Probably very echoey, guys, and you can't see me. I apologize. I'll put overlays up here for you. Oh, much better. There's like little shields on it almost. Yep, yep. Okay, Fleur de Lis French. Oh, look at the little beads. See all the little yeah, beads? There's... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a nice piece too. Fleur de Lis French, Gothic oh. Revivals. That piece is going to be a little bit older than the rest of the pieces in the house. Oh, wow. So that piece probably dates to the turn of the 20th century rather than the 1920s because of the amp, the plated amber glass. I'm reading that like an amber color, right? Yes, it's very, it's like the perfect amber shade. So that's yeah. the Gothic Revival in France. So if you looked at like Chart Cathedral or you looked at Great cathedrals of France, you would find that same shape. So okay. this is late. This is late 1800s. I would say value on that lamp is going to be just around two thousand dollars. Oh, that's wow! That's a nice one. I, that's a nice one. Yeah. I cannot believe that is late 1800s. <laughs> that's late. No, that's late. Yeah. That's that's young. That's older than a lot of the lamps that we've. A lot of the light fixtures we've seen. Yeah, oh, I can. Oh, that's a nice. That's a nice one too. Definitely French. I, somebody was in France sourcing lights. We are now up the stairs, and this is another, actually, another one of my favorites. This is one that I also am not sure is vintage or not because it almost seems like it could be, like, an anthropology light or something. <laughs> an anthropology light. Yeah. Well, this one, this one is French, and this one has a nice, a nice quality to it. Uh -huh. um, a couple of things. Um, I would think that you, do you like the garlands, the tendrils? This, that's my favorite part, the little, the part. It yeah. almost looks like it's like actually beaded or like hanging like that. Yeah. But it's structured. 
Right, because it's all hand done. So this is why this is why the cost is so high. Because first of all, the artisans don't exist anymore who know how to do this. Right? Got it. And secondly, the quality is so high. Um, mm -hmm. This is a nice one. This is French. This is also the 1920s. And oh, it really does have that arts and crafts look, even though it's in a French style. So value on that, I would say just under 4,000, 3,500 to 4,000 or so for that one, if you had to replace that one, because it isn't, you know, it kind of is everybody's taste. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's very like a true. Classic That's why I was saying about like the anthropology, like it just seems like more of a, that, if you want a small important. French chandelier, this is it. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And for value, that's the same thing. So we are in the dining room and there is a lot of construction happening in the house at the moment, which is very exciting. You're going to see that very soon on the channel. But we do have a light fixture here. Now, Dr. Lori has a photo and I'll pop up um, some screenshots for you guys to see the fixture. But this is it. It has like an Asian influence to it, which I thought was interesting because it was the only light in the home that did. Yeah, it's metal toll work. So it's metal and it's cat and it's basically um, constructed metal. It's yeah. called Chinese Chippendale. It has a very red, Chinese red color. Yes, it and does. It has some, it has some details on it, some hand painted detail work on it too. Yes. Um, and a pagoda at the top. Yeah, it does. Yes, I, guess. The pag I wish that, I wish it was unveiled because I feel like it's such an interesting light to look at. Yeah, yeah. Well, your pictures tell a lot of it. Yeah. Um, it, it's a nice, that's a nice light. I like it a lot and it's unusual. So Chinese Chippendale is something that a lot of people basically looked at in the 18th century, in the 19th century. They looked back at classical styles and then they united it with this interest in all things Asian. This one is about $1,250 to about $1,500. It's significant, okay. it's big, and it's unusual to have. What's also beautiful in this room before you go, you know, let them feast their eyes on those beams because those beams I, are very arts and crafts. Uh, and they are, right? Yeah, and I just love that. It's my one of my favorite parts of the whole home. This, the stencil work on it and also that the the complementary colors of the mossy green and the red like uh -huh. cranberry red with a scroll at the bottom and usually you put an initial or your monogram in the skull so you scroll so you could put like oh DS like here in the, like here yes like there oh you there's like an like, opening for it for the initial yeah, oh yeah for your God. initials you know so you could that put your so ds there yeah. yeah you could put your ds I'm just there i could add mine yes <laughs> Yes, it's your home. Oh, it's yours. my house. So, that's really cool. And the other yeah. thing that's cool about it is each one of those flower forms has a different iconography, so a different symbolism. Sometimes they mean prosperity. Oftentimes they mean uh, abundance. Like that means abundance. Oh, so they wow. mean different things depending on what's happening in that particular room. But we have another light fixture. This is the top breakfast nook. And this one, I believe, is also like a wrought iron or like cast iron. And maybe from what you said, has maybe some toll work on it as well. That's okay. right. You got it. You got it. So you can see those two. Yeah, you're so smart. You can see those two that come around like this, that scroll pieces. Those are wrought iron. And then yes. the toll work are the thinner ones. Right. There you go. And then look at the way you've got that nice molded glass piece really nicely done. You know, what you have also is organic and then you've got again, those straight lines. So arts and crafts, uh, you know, 1920s, value on this one, just about $1,200. Okay, in the hallway now, and we have two fixtures here. So we have a sconce on the left wall and I actually have, I think three of these throughout that look like right. this. And then we have this fixture that's hanging from a skylight. I actually removed the glass from here. The light fixture, again, is one of my favorites and it's Murano. It's Italian. It, it, it has that great motif. It's blown glass. It's made in Venice, Italy, and it's multicolored. Uh -huh. all, but it all has to be hand put together. So all of this hand work is happening. And then it has the flowing grapes, at, you know, an outdoor plain air al fresco kind of place. It has little grape clusters I'm just noticing right now. Yes, the I grape just clusters. That. Well, the glass is beautiful because it's one of the best places for the production of glass. And it's been that way since the 1200s. Uh -huh. So yeah, oh. it's the best glass, yes. So again, this is gonna be like a $4,000 fixture because not only of its size, the armature is made of toll work, right? Of the metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are the leaves. So you'll understand that these are supposed to be grapes. 
But yes. those balls of glass, those little round mouth blown glass are all done individually through a blow pipe in a very, very hot furnace. I, I like this one as well. And this one I like because it relates to the Spanish colonial nature of the house. This is actually a directly above where the master pendant is here. And then remember the sconce on the wall. So same exact oh. placement. Oh, I understand now. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this this one, I would say, is worth about what we said the other one was worth. So in that 500, 800 range. Got it. So in the large upper bathroom upstairs, we have this fun plaster or like seashell kind of form. And I love this one, too, because when you turn it on, it's just like, I don't know. Something about it is so fun. I like the way it radiates. Yes. And mm -hmm. when you have good light fixtures, right, then you have, of course the way the light looks it's a whole different experience this one is nice kind of a kind of a fan shape but kind of also a seashell like you said yeah a composite um working into the 1940s you know it might be in the bedroom or the dressing room of like one of those those old hollywood style movie stars like joan crawford or betty davis that kind of thing it's perfect Got for it. a bathroom perfect for a bathroom it's art modern i talked about that art movement it's a little bit later than what we've seen of the art deco it's okay. art modern and value on this one is going to be rather high, probably just around a thousand dollars. Okay. I like nice. that one. I like that one. That's <laughs> gonna go anywhere, but the best place for it is probably maybe a big walk-in closet or a bathroom or you know, somewhere private and personal. We have made our way to the last bedroom. This is actually my bedroom upstairs, a primary room. And this, I probably would have to say, is the largest fixture in the home. This piece is gorgeous. It's French. It is lead crystal it has a beautiful armature all yes. of that metal work is really gorgeous and all hand done and each one of those crystals is probably quite heavy one of the yep. attributes yes of, very of Chris, yeah is the Especially weight and then the ball is very important that round ball at the bottom is quintessentially french for these big ornate chandeliers um now this one has multiple lights and it has a lot of different types of crystal so it has the cut crystal motif it's got some quatrefoil it's got some flower form but mm -hmm. it's 24 percent lead weight so that's why it's heavy now time period it dates to the period of the house the 1920s 1930s time wow. period it's french and again it, it is completely in in keeping with the spanish colonial style even though it's French manufactured, value on this piece. Are you ready, Drew? I am. <laughs> value on this piece is $15,000. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Sales oh, record for wow. a similar one recently sold at $15,000. It's a beautiful example. It's really beautiful. Yeah. A lot of people oh, wow. looking for that statement piece, that big showstopper piece. Well, we stopped at the best, I guess. <laughs> I know. Um, well, I would love everybody, if you have not checked out Dr. Lori's channel, please go in the description box below and check it out because she has amazing videos on appraisals. What other videos do you make? You do like bargain, bargain. Oh fine. my gosh, we do all kinds of videos. So I'll teach you what to look for, how to resell, um, treasure hunting from other people. Our real bargains videos are really popular. How to source them. I love treasure hunting and thrifting. We love that. Yes. Right? So I do a lot of those too. But yeah, I hope you will tune in. And thanks so much for inviting me into your beautiful new home. The fixtures are gorgeous. Thank you so much, Dr. Lori. Thank you, Drew. Bye. <laughs>